Welcome to Oz Nomad Destinations. Follow us as we caravan our way around Australia. This is Ed and I'm Beck, and we're finding you the best free and budget camp spots Oz has to offer. Fishing, crabbing and hiking our way through this awesome country. For notifications, click subscribe and hit the bell and that will keep you up to date. Forever heading south. Today is no different. The rain is back and it's freezing cold. See ya, Chuka. It's been great. We are heading to Broadford. We are doing an overnighter at the Broadford Bowls Club, about a hundred kilometres out of Melbourne. It's a free 24 hour camping spot and it's at the back of the bowls club. You must be self-contained. It was a wee bit wet underfoot. There is possibly enough room for six to 10 vans depending how everyone parks. The railway runs right along the back of the camping area. Most were small trains, and while there was a fair few during the day, there wasn't that many at night. Down at the front entrance, there was a park with a toilet block, a creek, and some barbecues and tables. We are here because we're heading to Melbourne. We are waiting till after peak hour. We are heading to the Melbourne's eastern suburbs around midday. We are camping there for the next five days on family's front driveway. I put my camera down a bit so we could enjoy our time. Two days later and it was still raining, so we sucked it up and went exploring. Danny Long Rangers, here we come. It was so cold. It didn't help that they are having an Arctic blast at the moment. Anyway, with four layers on, we ventured out. It was all fog and misty. We went to the lookout. It cost us $5 to get in. On a good day, you can see right to the Melbourne city. We toddled around the gardens and then headed into this cute little town called Olinda. We did a walk around town and grabbed some lunch to warm us up. The trees are pretty impressive off here. They are huge. The fog and the mist hung around all day. Then we tripped across the Buffing Billy train track. After a quick Google search, it seems it would be coming past in the next 30 minutes. So we waited. It leaves from Belgrave daily for tours. The next day we headed to the markets. The variety of different cultures and food in Melbourne is just delicious. And these markets were brilliant. Loads of pastries, coffee, food vendors, deli cheeses and deli meats. Fresh seafood and fresh butchers. We grabbed a ton of meat and lunch and then headed home. Today we're meeting family for lunch at the Burwood Brickworks Shopping Centre. What an amazing shopping centre this is. We grabbed some Japanese for lunch 
It was delicious. And then we headed to the roof. What an amazing space. So many veggies. This space looks out over the modern unit complexes around the shopping centre. We love staying with family and getting chauffeured around. Today we're heading to Fitzroy. What an experience. We walked through the markets and around the streets. Having local knowledge is so handy. Love this, there is so much to see. The streets and laneways are so cool. So we've made it into Melbourne and we are heading to Geelong tomorrow to jump on the ferry to Tasmania. Cannot wait. We passed some guys getting ready to add to the laneways. I found the tram so exciting. You don't see them in many places. We had the best Japanese lunch. Such yummy ramen. Never tasted anything like it. Way better than home. Going to have to teach myself to cook this. The whole area is so arty. How are these chairs? And how are these gorgeous little houses? I love them. The whole of the Fitzroy area has such a great vibe. Great coffee, great food and great clothes shops. Next stop is the son-in-law's business, Seventh Beam. It's a great software development company making apps for some of Australia's greatest companies. In we went to check out where it all happens. It was so awesome to see. Then it was into next door and upstairs to check out the city views. Today we are heading further south. Time to grab some amazing goodies. Second time to this shop in two days. It is delicious. If you're in the area, just do it. We are heading off and aiming to go through the middle of Melbourne at midday and hit Geelong mid-afternoon. It is freezing and we are wondering if we've done the right thing. We checked into the Geelong showgrounds. It was $30 a night, including power and water. We went for a quick trip around town to have a look and then went to the pub for dinner. Thank goodness for that diesel heater. It's one degree this morning. Tomorrow we will be busy. 
today we are heading further south. Yep, we're going to Tassie for winter. I've been up since Sparrow. Can't sleep for the excitement. We spent the day loading everything from the freezer in the van to the car fridge and flicked it to freezer. You can't have your gas running on the boat. Ditched all our fresh fruit and veggies and honey. There's a full list on the Spirits webpage of what you can and cannot take. We left the condiments in the fridge. It's that cold it won't matter. Cleaned out the fridge, mopped all the floors, dumped the toilet and water and packed our bags for the boat. We're doing an overnighter on the way over, so we booked a cabin. You can take a small bag on board with you. The room came with pillows, sheets and a doona, towels and soap. There are power points, so bring your phone chargers. We had internet for the first two hours. It took that long to get out through the heads. There is paid Wi-Fi in the main area of the boat, not in the cabins. We booked a porthole room. By porthole, I mean it's about a one metre by one metre window. It was so good. I thought it was going to be the size of a bucket. You know, those portholes you see on the little boats. So we're sitting here patiently waiting to get on the Spirit of Tasmania. Can't hardly wait. Loading opened at 4.30pm and we are leaving at 7pm. We arrived at 4.30. They checked us in and gave us our cabin number. Then we moved to quarantine. They checked through our van and car, and I forgot about a piece of driftwood I had in the van. It got flagged to be checked on arrival. They checked our gas tanks and tagged them, and then we progressed to the lineup section. They are sorting us out in sections as we go. We stayed in this section for about 30 minutes. Then they sorted us again and moved us forward. At this stage, all the big caravans were now in a row. It was awesome watching them load dozens of semi-trailers onto the ship. Just the trailers without the trucks. They are so super fast. It was an experience to watch in itself. The sun set and it was after dark and we started moving forward. All the cars went on first, then the four-wheel drives and campers and motorhomes, and then the caravans. It is so very well run and so professional. We got parked and grabbed our bags. It's a quick walk to the lift. Beside the lift are little flyers to take, so you can remember where your car is. And the lifts are all colour coded. So the little card had the level you were on and the colour of the lift. We had our cabin number and as you step out of the lift, there's a person there to greet you. We told her our cabin number and she pointed us in the right direction. This is our first time on a big ship. We dropped our bags and headed off to explore. Well, we're all boarded and we're here. And we're going to take off in about a half an hour and then we're off to dinner. The whole experience so far has been so well organised. I'm not sure what I expected, but it wasn't this. We left about 15 minutes late, so I was thinking that was pretty good with the volume they were loading on that boat. We headed outside to watch us leave the port. Couldn't get over how many seagulls were all chasing the ship, catching little fish that it was stirring up. Anyway, we are off to dinner. That's us for this week. Be kind, stay happy, love your life, and we'll see you next week at 6am on Sunday morning.